Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to implement uh, uh, dragging objects with uh, mouse cursor. So if I go into the play mode here, then you can see I can move around. And then if I push the G key, then I can start dragging objects. So these are either physics simulating objects like this one and this one with the, the skeleton, the, the mannequin or non-simulating physics uh, objects like this one. And I have a quick fun demo here with the these um, gears. Okay, so first we're gonna see a quick overview of this and then we're gonna go into the step-by-step. -step. So here on the left, I have everything that concerns the uh, pawn movement and the activated of, of the grab mode. And on the right, I have, um, once we start grabbing an object, it's we, we play this, and then each frame is going to uh, execute the part uh, in the bottom here, on the bottom. So let's see when we start grabbing an object, what happens. So when the left mouse is pressed, then um, we get the... Uh, the coordinates of where we clicked on the screen here and then we line trace forward then we uh, check if the object is movable then we remember to the distance to the object and then uh, the component that we're dragging and then we go into um, seeing if the component is simulating physics. If it's not, remember its relative grab location. We'll see about this. And if it is, then we're checking if it's a skeletal mesh. And uh, then we're using, yes, we're using the, the physics handle. Like here, I forgot to mention it. And then uh, we remember the grab location like this before, but it's just a little different. All right, so this was the activation. Then we, we, if we release the mouse button, then we just release the component from the physics handle. And then we set this to null. Now in every tick, if we are in grab mode, so if we've actually grabbed an object, we're going to see if it's uh, valid. And then uh, if it's a simulative physics or not, we're going to go for the non simulative physics object. This method, we're actually um, getting the mouse coordinates and then calculating a position where the object should be uh, placed. And here for the um, simulated physics one we just move there the, the physics handle uh, we set the target location and then we draw a line so that we know um, where our uh, targeted position is to the actual one so this is going to make sense only for the physics objects okay so that's kind of it for the general, um, for the overview. Okay, so let's put this here. So we'll go into the step-by-step -step now. So I'm going to create a new pawn. So blueprint class, we inherit from the pawn. And we'll say, mouse grab pawn, like this. We'll open up this so first okay so this uh, we have a player start here so it's gonna spawn the the uh, pawn there and in order to say which pawn it's gonna utilize we're going to the game mode so I have mine here uh, and then then we just tell it which uh, pawn class to use. So we'll select here, grab, mouse grab pawn class. 
this one, save. Then we go into the mouse grab on class here. And I'm um, oh, sorry about that. It goes to the other monitor. Okay. So here we will only need the event tick, this one. And uh, first we need to show the mouse pointer. So when we go into, so the movement is just going to stay in place. We're not going to move it. I'm going to show you afterwards this one. So in order to go into the grab mode, we'll push the G key like this. Then when we press it, we want to get the player controller. So the player controller uh, sets if we see the mouse or not. So we say uh, show mouse cursor. We get the states of the show, show mouse cursor. We, um, <clears throat> we say not, this inverts this, and then we set it again. So see here, set mouse cursor. Set show mouse cursor, this one. So you grab from press, so it's going to be a switch. So we're not going to keep G pressed when if uh, each time we switch. Okay, so we set this like this. So now when press G, it should show the mouse. And we pre if we press again, then it should. So now I can't move. If I press G, you can see the mouse. Press G again, it disappears. Okay, so. This was quite simple to do. Now, uh, when we click with the left mouse button, so mouse, <coughs> that's actually left mouse button, this one. Now, here, if when we press and hold down, we want to grab the objects, and when we release it, we want to release the object. Okay, so we grab from here and say we'll check if we're in uh, a grab mode. So we we'll have to remember let's create a variable grab mode. So we'll have to remember if we're in a grab mode because when we're not, then we're gonna zero out the variables, right. So here I'll get this and we'll do a branch, actually two branches. Like this and we'll plug in the grab mode like that. Okay, so here I'll have to... Okay, so this is the more the important part. Part. So we're go gonna have to uh, line trace for the for the object, right? So we get here. I'm gonna click on the screen. It's gonna line trace forward, and we're gonna hit the object, right? So here we're gonna get the player controller because it's this the player controller that uh, controls the the mouse. So there's a function convert mouse location to world space. So this is the key of implementing this. So this is gonna, we're gonna give us the world location of the mouse click. So it's gonna take the camera and compute where we click the mouse. But this is only, if we look, if we would have a camera here, so this click would be somewhere over here, right? So it's gonna be right at the edge of the camera. So with this one, we're going to do a line trace by channel. OK, so I'm looking forward like this. And when we click, oh, we're line tracing forward to the object. And then we're getting that object. So. The start location of the trace is going to be the location um, 
the word location where we click that gives uh, that is given by this node right so you can put that in and the end location so we're line tracing from here to the object like this forward so we take this location and we add it we add a distance of trace and I will go here and the direction is going to be the direction that we get from here so now take this and we'll multiply it with a float this is going to be the length of the line trace we can put whatever but let's put by the way you can add a literal so if you want to add a uh, Let's put that thousand here. Uh, that's like ten meters, something. So if you uh, if you wanna have a value that is you can connect to other stuff, like uh, I can connect this here. You can you can search for literal, and uh, then the value is not gonna be here, but here. So you can do other stuff with it. But we're not gonna use it here, but just a note. So this is the um, uh, length one vector for the direction of the trace and we'll multiply that with the uh, length of the trace so that it's going to give us um, a vector with the right length but we have to put it here to start from here so then we're going to have to add this like this to add to the location of our uh, click right so this is going to be the end of the line trace so i think we can uh, test this out so let's check trace, com trace complex because we may need it so let's see draw debug type for duration let's set it to five seconds so let's see now if we if we push G then we click mm, something doesn't work mm, let's check this let's see what's ha what happens yeah we haven't put the grab mode yeah so we have to set the grab mode, right? Here, that's here. <clears throat> so you take the grab mode, you set it. Uh, we're actually gonna toggle it. So get it again, and then we'll say a knot like this and then plug it here and now we have it toggled right okay so each time we push G, the g key is going to toggle this so it's going to start with the false right so if we play again and then we push g and then click then you can see it does um line trace we can't see exactly where we line trace because it's in the the exact same direction right okay so once we got this done then uh we have a result here so if we break this result then we get the component this is the component that we hit so we don't use an actor because there might be different components into one actor so we have to treat them separately now if we um <clears throat> first let's there's going to be a lot of checks here because if not then we might have uh, different stuff so first we want to check that we actually hit something so we put a branch here if we don't we just don't do anything and now we want to check if this component right here is movable. So um, <clears throat> there's a thing called mobility. 
get mobility this one so this one we can we'll check if it's equal like this and here we'll use again um, literal um, sorry about that uh, so literal mobility I think yes right so if we as you can see there was just one value here like uh, like a byte value but if we put a literal in then we can select something so if the mobility of this one is movable then we can work with it if not then uh, it's going to give us errors right so we branch again here and then we plug this in and now um, this should be good. Now we can go ahead and uh, here we can. Um, so I'm thinking we might have to copy some stuff and I'll explain them later. I'll copy some stuff from uh, the other poem that I've uh, implemented and I'll explain them later. So. Uh, copy these right okay so these are uh, for the mobility and I'll explain them at the end because I want to so let's see yeah so we can move around now because of the stuff that I just put in okay so if I, if I push the G key and I click and I G again I push G again and we can see the uh, the the line trace, right? So as you can see, it stops at the object. That's good. Okay, so let's go back now. Okay, so here, um, let's just try and um, uh, let's see if we have. Um, so we're checking the physics if the component is generating physics. Now, what I'll do is actually uh, split this, um, add the rear of melt like here. We'll break again, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to have too many lines from here. So we can, we can carry this, our heat result over and then break it again. If we click this, by the way, if you click this, then it's going to uh, put things neatly like this. So you will only have the exits, the outputs that you are using, right? So you can put again from the component. Actually, let's do some other stuff. Let's remember the component. So let's create a variable. So it's say grab component like this and we'll call this um, a primitive or well, it's gonna, gonna make it of a primitive type right so we'll just set it here set so there's nothing to do on the false right here because it's not if it's not movable we're not doing anything so I'll take this hit component good now we have it now we can use this variable instead. Okay, so let's put this back, collapse that. And here we'll just check, um, let's put a branch and we'll check if this component is simulative physics. Like this. Now, if it is, then put a route here Sorry about that. All right, okay. So we have a branch here for this, the part that is simulating physics and the other one that doesn't. Now I'm gonna tell you after, uh, later why this is, there's a thing that I can't, I haven't solved yet, but uh, I'll tell you about it later. So first let's grab the physics simulating objects. 
So for that, we use, uh, we're going to create a physics uh, handle. You could use a physics constraint for this. Uh, if you look into my other tutorial, uh, I have another tutorial on how to grab things using the, the like the crosshair, right? So when you grab things, they are actually locked to your screen. So it's different from this one. So if you want to use a physics constraint, you can you can use stuff from there. I'm using the physics handle here because it's just easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the physics handle and we're going to say attach. Oh, sorry, it's not attach. It's uh, grab component location. Now, OK, so here here we have to calculate some stuff. So the actually we don't, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so the grab location is actually where we hit with the line trace. So if we hit here with the line trace, we have a um, we have a location in the world space that we just pop in here. So the physics handle will is going to grab the object from this location. So, so it's it's like kind of an anchor. Then when we move it, it's going to hang from here. OK, so this grab location is actually if we look here, the hit result. That's why I told you it's going to we're going to break the hit result again here. So we don't have too many lines. Um, so we have the location here. So it says location of the hit in world space. So that's what we're going to use. So pop it in here. And then the component, we already have it Remember it's here as the grab component. So we'll plug this in. And for now, it should work. But let's, well, yeah, let's try it like this. So you push the key, G key, and I don't grab this one because this is not simulating physics. I'm going to grab this one. And well, it doesn't work, of course, because we've only grabbed it. So we're going to have to implement the eventic, right? So this actually works, but it doesn't move because we're going to have to update the location of the physics handle each frame. Right. So let's see uh, here in the event tick. Um, so we'll check if we're in the gram mode. Right. So if we're not, we're not doing anything. And then we'll check if the component well, we don't need to check if it's valid or not because we've actually checked it here. So then we'll have to check if it's simulative physics, let's say, because uh, I'll show you why later we need this. Because we have different uh, method of grabbing here, right? Okay, so we'll take the grapple component and we'll say is simulating physics. And we'll put this here. So we'll take this and we'll treat this case. Okay, so now when we look somewhere, we're going to have to take the same location on the screen and then uh, add the distance that we had here. So the plan is this one. We're going to move the object in the same plane as our um, camera. So actually perpendicular to the direction which you were looking. So we're going to actually move it like this. So in a plane which is perpendicular to the direction of the camera, right? So we need a, the, a distance. So when we click somewhere, we have the coordinates and the direction, but we need the distance. 
So that distance is going to be the original distance of the object. Or well, you can calculate it differently, but we'll, that's what we'll take here. So for that, we're going to have to go back in here. And then we have to remember this, right? So let's put this here. So if, after we check the object, then we look at the hit result and we actually have it here, the distance from the trace start to the location in the world space. So let's add a variable and we'll say distance to well, actually original distance to object. And this is going to be a simple float like that. So we'll set it here. And then we'll take it from our hit result, the distance. So if we collapse this, and if you see, we've actually just introduced this. Okay, so now we can, we remember this. Oh, sorry about that. So we have this already, right? And here in event tick, now we're going to have to do what we've done here. This one, we can copy it, right? So with this one, when we look on the screen, we get when we look at an object, put the mouse over it, we have the location in the world space and it's going to give us a direction. And the distance, we'll have it here, right? So we'll kind of do the same thing like this, but instead of this, we have the distance that we remember. So you can actually copy the whole thing like this. So here we'll pop the, the distance. So again, from the world space, from the screen, we kind of line trace. We calculate the, the position where the, the grabbed location should actually be, right? So this is where the grab location should be, not where the the center of the object should be. And I'm going to elaborate that further uh, afterwards, right? So now we have a physics handle and we want to update it. So it's called set target location like this. Now we simply put this in. So that should do it. Okay. So the anchor that we put from here, we're just going to move it somewhere over here. And then because it's the physics can handle X with forces, it's going to pull this part of the object to the end location. So I think we can try it like this. Of course, it's not going to work. It's only going to work on the physics objects. Yeah, so it already works. So that's like really the minimal stuff. So now you can, uh, well, yeah, of course we cannot, yeah. Um, we cannot let it go because we have to treat this here. So when, when we release the left mouse button, then we have to set the grid grab component to, uh, sorry, have to set it. We'll set it to null like this, and then we're going to have to release it. So with the physics handle, I'm going to say release component. So that should be it for the release. That should work. Let's see this again. And if I release it, okay, so that works. 
I can pull on the, the, the gears also. So you can see it works already well. Okay. Yeah, so we've got some stuff here. That's because uh, we haven't done other things. Yeah. So let's implement the grab for the, uh, the non-physics simulating objects like uh, this one here. So I've left this here. So we check if it's simulating physics and if it's not, we're going to go this way. So we're going to have to remember the, the grab location uh, of um, the where we actually grab the object because when we grab it, uh, we're going to have to set this. Well, you know what? Let's just grab. Let's just update here. So we have the same branch here if it's simulating physics. And let's move this to the right like this. So if it's not simulating physics, let's just set its location, right? So we'll take the com grab component and we'll say set world location. And it's a, it's a very simple um, calculation, but it's going to actually, um, we're going to make it more um, precise afterwards. So we'll do the same thing that we calculated here. So let's just put it on the left here so we can use it. Um, yeah, we'll just put it like this and then we'll use it here, right? So we'll see what happens when we grab this object. Let's see. So I push G, then I click and then I can move it. Now what you can see is actually that that uh, when I when I move the object first when I click it snaps to the middle and that's because when we set the here the the location we set it to the middle of the object right so when we click the first like here we're going to have to remember this point into the with the relation to the center of the object then we, when we go somewhere and release it, then we'll, we're going to have the this point here already in the world space, and we'll have to calculate this one, right? So, like the grab point here, uh, we're going to have to pass into the relative coordinates of the objects of the object of the component, and then we, when we release it, we're going to have to take it back. No, actually. We're going to have to transform the, the destination point back to the center and then set the center, right? So when we go back here, instead of this, this one here, we're going to have a calculated version of that one, right? So let's see how we can remember this. So we're going to have to remember the grab location in the in the coordinates of the grab component so we'll say relative grab location and we'll put this a vector okay so we're gonna have to set this here right so what do we set this to? So this is the location relative to the center of so the the trace location, the heat location to the relative to the center of the object. So this normally you sh uh, what we can do is take the transform of the object and apply an inverse transform of this one, but it doesn't quite really work as I want it to. So what we'll do is take the heat component and then get its location, the world location. And then we're going to create a transform for this. 
actually it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna create a transform on its own so the the location where the hit happened is this one so we're going to take it and we'll say inverse transform location right and then we'll connect this here so this is going to transform the the location into a, in a transform actually so now you can put it here so let's go over this again let's put it like this because it's more uh or something like this i don't know wow let's say this good okay so let's go over this again so we have the hit location this one which is in the world space and then we have the location of the uh let's, i think we'll do like this so we can understand it better okay i think that should be okay okay so the world location of the object is this one it's to the origin of the world so like xyz right so it's like a could be like a hundred a hundred and a hundred uh and we make this that a transform here what that will mean is that the transform would be considered like having an object if we apply this transform from here to an object it's like it would add like the object it's at zero 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 and it will just add those coordinates in and then it will bring it here right so if we take any object and we apply this transform it will bring the object here in this position okay so if the direct transform means that we add this the inverse transform means that we get this back to zero right so the so if we invert that we get this object back to zero so taking the the world location of the hit from here this one here uh and if we imagine that this one the, the cube has like a transform like 100 100 and 100 on each x xyz and the hit location had 200 200 200 and then if we if we apply the inverse transform that the um, um, the hit location will actually be um, calculated in relation to the center of the object so it will just subtract from the other one now it will be like 100 100 and 100 but it's just coincident it's the same like if we put 300 for the the hit location it's going to be 200 right the result so in short we're taking the world location of the hit and we're expressing that in the relative position from the center of the object that we hit. So that's what we have here, relative grab location. Okay. So now, if we, if we understood this, then it's going to be really simple. So what we do here in the in the in the eventic, we're just going to do the other way around. So. We have the world location where we want the grab location to be. So this location would be here. And then we want to subtract from that, actually transform it back and get the world location of the destination location of the, the object, right? So for that, we're going to consider, uh, we're going to transform uh this so let's see so we'll 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 transform so this is the world location where we want the grab location to be so this will transform this using the relative grab location right so we'll uh, say um inverse 
transform location like this one. So we'll take the, the world location from here. Let's just cut this. And uh, from here, we'll just connect this one. So that means that um, from our like uh, coordinates here in the new location, we have these coordinates. We make a transform from that and then we zero is zero in on this the new center of the object and that's and this is going to be in the world coordinates right because this is world coordinates and we apply the relative inverse transform to that and we get the world coordinates the new world coordinates for the object so yeah it's more it's more complicated but i think uh, i think we're, we're okay <clears throat> So let's go here and we put G and I grab this. Now, as you can see, it um, just works, right? So when we grab the object, we actually grab it from the location that we, where we hit the object, right? And not from the center. Okay, so that's good. I'll just ignore this for now. Okay, so this is good. We have this done and this one, and now we have to <clears throat> uh, we have to see how we can do about the skeletal meshes because if we if we grab this the skeletal mesh, uh, you see it doesn't grab it from exactly from where we want it, um, like from here doesn't grab it from the leg, it grabs it from the center. That's because when we grab here uh, um, a skeletal mesh, it's considered one single component, but it actually has a lot of bones, right? So when we grab it, we actually grab it from one, we should grab it from a, a certain bone, like, like the hand here. And uh, so we'll have to give it that information. So if we go back here into the left mouse button, right, we have the split for the non-physics objects and for the physics objects. And so here we're gonna have to, as you can see, there is an input for a bone name. So we're gonna have to give it that, okay. That bone name is actually uh, here. When we hit, it actually gives us the bone name. But uh, we're gonna have to remember that. So, because um, back here, um, yeah, let's go here and then let's see if it's uh, if it's a skeletal mesh. I'll check that. Uh, cast actually. As to skeletal mesh, this one. Uh, sorry about that. It's actually cast to skeletal mesh component. Um, I'll just take this one. Well, you know what? I actually use the variable cast skeletal mesh component like this. Okay. Now, uh, if we are not, if it's not a skeletal mesh, well, actually both will go in here and we'll see how we can uh, make this different for, for each case, right? So the bone name, we're actually going to remember it because we're going to do some stuff with it in, uh, in the eventic here, you'll see. Um, for the other one, we before I showed you that there, there's a line that we draw so we're gonna need that so we can draw that line okay so let's see here bone name we'll create a variable bone name like this and we'll put that to a name it's not a string by the way 
So let's just set it here. And only when the cast works, we're going to remember this, right? So the bone name will take it from here. And we'll just pop it in here. And we can collapse that. And then we have the variable and just put it in here like this. So now it should already work, right? Um, that should already work, if I remember correctly, right? Now, if I grab its foot, like from here, as you can see, it already works. And now it doesn't pull it, him correctly. And that's because the foot, because of the physics implementation, so because it's uh, the pull force is relative to the the mass of the object so since the foot it has really low mass then it's not going to affect the other ones anyway but yeah so it actually works um yeah so it actually made it work for all of them um now let's see i have before I had also, I was drawing a line from the grab location to the actual component. We're going to implement that and let's see what problems we have here. Let's see what, what, what it says here. So it says access non trade to grab component. Well, why is that grab component? Yeah, so we, we do actually have to check here. I actually have to check if the grab component is um, is valid like this. Uh, well, actually, like this. Yeah, that's why we have the. Uh, so if it's not valid, so we could be in grab mode, but not have grabbed actually an object. So now it should work uh, without uh, giving errors. Yeah, let's try again. Yeah, no errors. Okay, cool. So now that we fixed that, what we want to do is trace a line from the grab location to the actual object. So this is going to be kind of the elongation of the physics handle. By the way, if you want to um, set this up, then you can click on the physics handle and then set this here to whatever you want. If snows, damping, all of this. And uh, yeah, just play around with this and see what, what you want to achieve, right? Okay, so now we want to trace the line from where we grab it to where it actually is. So um, uh, this, the, we're actually going to need the relative grab location because it's going to be grabbed from, let's say, the shoulder right here. And then when we go here really fast, then our uh, physics handle will, will be here, but it's going to be, the object will be here until it actually arrives to that location because it's not instantaneous like this one. Um, like the non-physics object where we set the actual uh, location. Here we just set the target, right? So we take uh, some time till it gets there. So we're going to have to remember this location and do the same thing kind of what we did uh, for the non-physics objects and then draw a line from here to here, right? So for that, we're just going to remember this like here. But uh, unlike this one, we can actually use for this case just the, the transform of the object. So for that, we'll say get transform. World transform actually like this, and 
so we have the world location in order to pass it into the coordinates of the the the, the component itself then we're going to take the transform of the component we're going to invert that and apply it to the world loca location here and we, we can actually do that uh, let's just cut this here and we'll say inverse transform location right so that's it's gonna transform it's gonna apply the world transform of the component inversely so that means it's gonna subtract so this what we have here is actually the relative grab location that we've done for this object so we're gonna set it again here like this sorry we actually move this oops sorry about that whoa okay so we'll do this right uh now let's yeah uh so now we have the relative grab location if we go into the eventic here then we're gonna have to calculate uh, uh, draw a debug line so from here draw debug line like this this is very cool because we can it doesn't show in game and it shouldn't because we can use a, um, <clears throat> let's collapse that okay we can actually use a, a mesh for this but uh, just really this is really quickly and you can actually see uh, stuff very well because when if we go back here and push G and then as you can see it lags behind the the cursor and you don't know exactly where you 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 grabbed it from so this is going to be useful okay so line start this is doesn't actually matter the order because it's asymmetrical so let's say from the line start, we're going to go with the uh, destination. So we're going to take this, right? The destination of our grab location, actually. Right? And the line end is going to be and the relative grab location. We're going to calculate it inversely. So now from this, we're going to say... Um, <clears throat> so this is the relative location to the object and we're gonna we're gonna have to take it um to a um, world location so we'll take the grab component we'll get the world transform like this And then uh, we'll say transform location. And then we'll link this here. Let's try it out. So if I grab this, uh, doesn't work that's because we have to give it the duration here uh, one probably and ah no sorry the duration is good because it's going to be one frame right let's put zero here I think because it's one frame like this which we actually need to give it the distance let's see five uh, thickness sorry about that okay let's see this again yeah so as you can see it's a black black line right so as you can see exactly from our, where I grab it let's grab it from the corner here and you can see it actually grabs the the cube from the corner right okay now last thing we want to fix is when we grab uh, skeletal mesh as you can see 
when I grab, grab it from here, it's from the center of the, the component. That's good. Works fine. But when I grab it from the end, like this, it's actually skewed, really, and it's, it's really weird. And that is because when we grab the component here, we are using, we, we, we actually grabbing the, the, um, the bone and we're using the transform of the component. And this is not good because, and when it calculates back, uh, then, uh, then uh, it, it just calculates back to the position of the, the whole component, but the, the bone is actually moved in the meantime. So we are grabbing it from the correct location because we don't actually change it. The, the physics handle remains uh, anchored to the same location, relative location actually to the bone. But when we draw the line, we draw it uh, in the wrong place, right? So let's say I can, I can fix this. So uh, here, let's go back. So here when we cast to uh, skeletal mesh component, then we have a skeletal mesh here. So we're going to have to... Um, uh, let's see here. We're going to have to remember... I think we're going to have to remember if it's a skeletal mesh. Yes. Okay, so let's create a skeletal mesh boolean here. Like this. So this we're going to use to create. We're going to have to recalculate this, but we're going to need a flip-flop or a, a boolean to remember if it's a skeletal mesh or not. So for that, we'll go here and we'll say, uh, we'll actually set this, right? So set, by default, it's going to be false. Wait, let me compile, false, right? So if it's a skeletal mesh, if the, the cast works, then we're going to set this and uh, to true, like that. Uh, okay, and now that we have this, we can go here, and uh, from the component, there is a certain method, uh, get socket transform, this one. So this will give us, even if it's named get socket transform, is actually, if you look in the documentation, it's either a socket or a bone, right? So instead of this, we're going to give it this. So the same thing will go from the inverse transform location, right? But we're going to have to switch from here. So let's put it the bone name like this. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, yeah, so the transform space is going to be world. There are some other stuff, but just world is what it's interesting for us. So if we're going to put a select here, and the choice is going to be from a, um, if, we, if a skeletal mesh is true, right? I'm going to pop this in here. So if it's true, we're going to take the transform of the bone. If it's false, then we're going to get the transform of the, of the component itself, right? So since we have actually casted it here, uh, we can use this directly, right? It's no problem. It's not going to give us an error because we know it's actually cast correctly. And this doesn't actually need the skeletal mesh. It just need a scene component. So yeah, apparently it works. Okay. So if we plug this here, that should work. Now, if we take this, we take the same thing and we copy it over to the, uh, to the, here, to the calculation of the line trace. 
align uh, debug line, right? We just say this. So the target is going to be the component bone name, same from here. S select mesh. So we're not going to have to recalculate it again because we have it already, right? Uh, and then here from the false, we take this one. And uh, wait, sorry, this is not correct. This is actually, it's actually like this. Uh, wait. No, sorry about that. I made a mistake. So uh, this is like this, and the location is correct. So this is why, because if I don't keep things proper, then I'm going to get problems, right? So we'll transform the same location, the relative location, either to a bone or to the component itself, right? So let's put this to, let's say, blue, like that. Now if you try it again, same component, goes cool. And now if we grab the mannequin again from the foot, like this, and you can see clearly that it grabs it from where it actually should be, right? So it actually grabs it from the bone itself. Okay, so that's good. This one works, this one works, so that is, everything works. Now, the last thing that I, that I said I would show you is the... Okay, so what we actually coded is here, right? So I said I will show you the pawn location and direction update. So this is normally you would do however you want them to do do them, right? But when you have the when you activate the mode, like when I press G, as you can see, I can move around now. If I press G, then I, I don't move, I don't move the, I don't look at stuff. I just move the, the mouse, right? I could, I can move with the, uh, the location, but I, I cannot look around because I have to select objects, right? So here, uh, normally you should have these like input axis. If you have a project like a default project, you have these already set up, right? So if you take these and you just branch out, like from, I'm not going to create them again because they're really simple, right? So you branch out uh, depending on the grab mode. So if you turn, if there is no grab mode on, then you do, if the grab mode is activated, then you don't do anything. If it's not activated, then you just input the yo and the pitch uh, for the control. And this is going to make the player look around, right? Uh, and the other one uh, for uh, moving, it's also simple. It's like this. Um, and you just, just have a look at it. I, I'm not going to recreate it again, right? So this is to update the movement. So it's the input axis and then you add how much you want to move around and then you add the actor uh, world offset. Okay. So that's it. So um, yeah, I hope see, this was useful. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.